أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين صدق الله العظيم أسفة البرذة زنالي شلب الفتري ببلوكنا سورة فاتحة بتفسير سورة فاتحة Surah Fatiha which is um, Makki Surah and it's the first Surah of the Quran the fifth in the number of revelation so that's a Makki Surah it has 25 words and around 113 letters now um, so just before I start Surah Fatiha is such a Surah that even if you were to spend you know you know one hour two hours three hours you cannot justify what the Surah Fatiha what Allah Ta'ala is trying to tell us because Surah Fatiha it's the beginning, the reason, there's, just, there's something, you know, it's just it's a surat, you know, when inshallah when we look into it, it's so deep, you know, Hassan Basri, because um, he says in tafsir, it comes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed around 104 books from all the prophets, from Adam and from all the son of the prophets, hundred and approximately 104 books were revealed. And all of the, khul- the khulasa of all those topics and everything that's mentioned, it's covered in the four main books, Quran, i.e. the Quran, uh, Zabur, Torah, and Injil. And all the other, all the khulasa, I mean the just and the compre- you know, com- oh, com- uh, compile everything, the khulasa, the just, is mentioned in Surah, Surah on the Quran. So all of 114 books, the just and the, you know, it's complete, you know, just Allah Ta'ala made it simple, conclusion in Surah in the four books. The conclusion of the four books are in the Quran. The conclusion of the Quran is in Surah Fatiha. So from Surah Fatiha, we can take, you know, we we'll take go. All the Qurans will be connected to anything in Surah Fatiha. Every single topic that we pick, any ayat, it will connect to Surah Fatiha. And some have gone even on to say further that oh, everything is in Surah Fatiha. It's in Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everything in Bismillah ar-Rahman is, is in the love, the letter Ba. That's how deep the scholars. And have gone into the Mufassir. So, to do this, I remember last year when we started once one of Juma after Ramadan, not this one, last time when we started, I started the Tafsir of Surah Fatiha, and I think we finished around March or April, time, about seven, eight months just to finish the Tafsir of Surah Fatiha. So, the time that we have, it is very limited, so we will try to get as much thing as well, and we want to understand the simple things, what the lessons, what Allah Ta'ala is trying. The reason being the Surah Fatiha is. Uh, the so uh, everything's in there because if you look at the Quran, in the whole Quran there are three normally Allah Ta'ala mentions Allah Himself, the qualities, and then the other thing is the risalat. Risalat meaning the ahkam, the do's and the don'ts and the purpose of Prophethood and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the third topic that is normally mentioned is the akhirat, Jannah, Jahannam and the hereafter. And those three topics are mentioned in Surah Fatiha. So what the Qur'an has, it's actually mentioned in Surah Fatiha. So that is why Surah Fatiha, it's the name that is given is Fatiha. It's one of the Fatiha. Why? It's a Fatiha to Fatiha to Qur'an. It, Fatiha means the opener. It is the first surah which is open the Qur'an. And also in Salah, it is the first thing that is read. So that's why it's called Surah Fatiha. And uh, Surah Fatiha, uh, there's so many, there's about 15 names that all scholars have given 15. Okay, Surah Fatiha. One of them from amongst the 15 is Ummul Kitab, Ummul Quran. Umm means the mother. Like uh, the Baytullah is called Ummul Qura, the mother of all the villages. Umm. So Ummul Quran, the mothers of the, the, the whole Quran, the mother of the Quran is Surah Fatiha. <coughs> and I, the reason I said is because everything in the whole Quran is mentioned in Surah Fatiha. Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book, um, is called Surah, Surah Al Hamd. Because it starts with a hamd. Sab'atum uh, sab'i masani. It's the one uh, very important name. Because Allah Ta'ala Himself says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ That we have given you sab'i masani, seven ayats which are continuously repeated. Because if you think about it, every single day, every single believer has to read Surah Fatiha in Salah. Without, uh, without Surah Fatiha, our Salat cannot be valid. It is, according to the Hanaf, it's wajib. According to some scholars, Shafi's, it's farv. It's, without Surah Fatiha, your namaz could not be done at all. So if you think about it, even if you take the faraiz, the farz, 
Imam Sahib will read the fard. If you were just to read first and at least 20 times we're reading Surah Fatiha or the Imam Sahib's reading, but we all are saying, I mean, every day, this is how much time, this every rakat. If you just take the two fards, four fard, uh, Zuhar and the Asr, Maghrib, the Faraiz. And then if you were to add the Sunnahs and then the Nawafil, every rakat. So that is like Sabba, seven ayahs which are continuously repeated. Every time, Sab'a Masani. There's other names as well. Waqiya. Waqiya is a protector. It protects us. Sh- um, wa- um, uh, another name is Asas. The Asal. The root of the Quran. And there's many other names for it. So, um, it um, sala- um, uh, Surah Al-Shukra. Surah Al-Kanz. Kanz means the, the treasure. Because this is one of the surahs. says the Prophet says in the Hadith. That from the Kanz. From the treasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This surah has... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed so many other names like this. We can go into, um, like I said, scholars, there's the tafsir, one of the tafsir, like this thick book just on Surah Fatiha. And it explains in detail why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why scholars have given these names. And these are the, some of the names, but the, the name is this in the Quran, Surah Fatiha. Um, and the, there's you know, many virtues for this surah. Uh, one of them, Abu Huraira, the he narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said that there is no other surahs in any book in the whole Quran or in Zabur and Torah has ever ever been revealed like such a surah like this. See, I mentioned in Mu'awwadatayn, the last week, there is no other, I mentioned the same thing, there is no surahs that are, have been revealed like the Mu'awwadatayn, but that it was for protection, there is no other surahs. But in terms of fadilat and virtue, this is the most virtue, one of the most virtuous surahs. He said this surah, there's no other, said the door, Prophet Sallallahu heard a sound and he said, the door has been opened, which has never ever been opened until now. And an angel has come down and he just came down to me and he presented me this surah, Surah Fatiha, and also presented the last verses of Surah Baqarah. It has come, and then Prophet said, it has come from the Kanz, that's what it says, Surah. Kanz means the treasure, from the treasures of Allah, Allah has revealed this, um, I am um, the surah. This is our first surah that was revealed at once, all of it together as well. And another virtue is a Prophet Allah Ta'ala himself. Um, he says that I have distributed. And another name for surat is surah salah. Because Allah himself, Prophet Sallallahu said in hadith, qasamtu salata bayni wa bayni abdi. It's a very important hadith that we need to know as we read surah Fatiha every day in namaz. We need to learn this hadith of Bahad. We say when we read salah, we are talking to Allah. And Allah is talking to us. We say Allah is talking to us. Now how? Because of this hadith, he says, "Qasamtu salat." I have distributed this salah, this surah Fatiha. Salah means Fatiha between myself and my slave. And this is the reason there are seven ayats. Three are for Allah, three are for <coughs> us human as guidance for mankind. And the middle ayat, half is it, half it is for Allah, and the other part. Half of his is for us. So this is Allah Himself says, I have distributed this surah between me and my slave. Nisf, half. When the slave in the surah in namaz, when you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, amazing, you know, it's amazing. Allah is replying to our salah. And He says, Hamidani Abdi, my slave. Imagine Allah Ta'ala has, He says, my slave has praised me. Hamidani Abdi. Allah replies, this hadith. Wa ida qal al abda when the insan, the insan, when the salam usalli says, Ar Rahman al Rahim, Allah replies, Athna alayya abdi. My slave has glorified me. You know, Allah Ta'ala is replying to every ayat we read. And as Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah Ta'ala replies, Majadani Abdi. My slave has exalted me, meaning he has made my, my status really high, exalted me. Allah Ta'ala says when he's a slave, says, Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah, I seek, I only worship you, and I only ask you for help. Hada bayni wa bayna abdi. This is between me and my slave. Because ibadah is for Allah, and isti'ana, when she's asking for help, is for human. This is between me and my slave. And that's ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, sirat al-ladina nanta alayhim ghayri al-maltubi alayhim wa al When he asks for guidance, Allah Ta'ala says, Hada li abdi wa li abdi ma sa'al. This is my slave asking me for guidance when you look at and it is my for my slave is whatever he asks. This is every time when we do salah, we should try to have this thing that Allah Ta'ala's praise, then Allah Ta'ala's glorification, then Allah Ta'ala says majjadani, Allah Ta'ala exalted, making Allah Ta'ala's status higher. Allah Ta'ala says between me and my slave. And the last thing, wali abdi masa. We should try to have this. In this way, at least, our salah we can have 
more khushu. These are some uh, those are virtues. Um, this the seven ayats. You see, seven ayats. Quickly mentioning the seven ayats. See, but if you try to, uh, if you look in the Quran, if you start from Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin, one Al Rahman Al Rahim, Malik Yom Din, Iya Kanabdu Iya Kanastain, Ihdin Al Sirat Al Mustaqim. And in the others, this surah, Sirat Al Ladina Lam Tarihim Ghairi Maqbub Alihim Wal Abdalin. There's only six. So this is where the difference of opinion comes in. Is Bismillah part of Surah Fatiha or not? Which is a fiqh masala. We don't want to go into it. But all we're saying, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Some scholars have made it part of Surah Fatiha. That is why, according to them, they would read Surah Fatiha out loud. According to the Shawafi Maslak, they would read Surah Fatiha out loud in Salah as well. So say Allah Akbar, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. Because according to them, Bismillah is part of Surah Fatiha. Whereas Ahnaf, they say that it is not a part of Surah Fatiha, it's part of the Quran in Surah Nahal, Innahu min Sulaiman wa Innahu Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. But it is not part of the Surah, meaning it's just a, a, one, a, a verse which differentiates between one verse, Surah and the other Surah. So then what happens is then there are only six ayats. So then they say, Ghayr al Maghdubi alayhim wa would be the seventh ayat. They say, Well, it says, Sab'a Mathan. So there's Bismillah, and then obviously Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, this is it starts off. I um, I begin with the name of Allah, the Rahman and the Rahim. And when I inshallah Rahman and Rahim and the loves of Allah, we will mention in this verse. Allah Taala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So he start Allah Taala is starting his Quran with Bismillah, with Basmala, and then he starts with Alhamdulillah. So one thing we learn: Allah has started his surah, his Quran, with the name of Allah, Bismillah. And with Alhamdulillah. So you'll see a lot of books that are written by scholars. They always have Bismillah. And even bayans that start, they start with Bismillah and the praise of Allah. This is how we should, in hadith it says, Mal kullu amrin balin lam yabda bi Bismillah, inada bi hamdillah, fahuwa akta. Anything that is started without Bismillah, without the name of Allah, or without the praise of Allah, it's incomplete. So anything that we should do, we should start. With the praise of Allah, everything. That's when you go to everything, we start with the praise before eating, before going to the house, before, before coming out of the house. We always start with the name of Allah. Okay? Even when you come inside the masjid, Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam. Even going out, everything we should do, we start with Bismillah. And then Allah Ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdu, and let's do the translation, then we go into the Alhamdu, all praise. Al, the loves Al. The, the alif lam it gives a meaning all praise because there's different in the Arabic terms there's different types of al you know the al alif lam because hamd is the main word but al is used for all kind of praise hamd praise lillah it is only for Allah who is rabb rabb is the Lord al alamin is all universe. I'll tell you why it's all universe. We have to translate all universe. So first Allah Ta'ala uses Alhamd. Hamd means praise. Okay, now Allah Ta'ala, the, um, the Hamd is such a word which has praise and it has gratitude. Remember, it's not only praise. You know, when we say, when we, something good happens, what do we say? Alhamdulillah. So is that praising Allah but also showing gratitude? When we eat, after eat, we say, Alhamdulillah, ladhi at'amana. When we finish, uh, when we wake up, Alhamdulillah, ladi ahiyana. When we see, you know, Allah Taala has guided us, Alhamdulillah, ladi hadana li hada. Alhamdulillah, ghufranak, Alhamdulillah, ladi adhaba an min adha. So Alhamdulillah is praising Allah, but the praise is such that we are showing gratitude as well. So hamd is such a word; it has praise and gratitude. And then Allah Taala says, Lillahi. So Alhamdulillah, all kinds of praise. Every single praise is for Allah. Praising, because Allah Ta'ala, He starts with the Quran, He created us, all the ni'mas He's given us. The first thing Allah Ta'ala wants us to do is iqrar, is to, you know, to testify that Allah, all praises are for Allah. All types of praises are only for Allah. Now the loves of Allah we mentioned last week as well, it is His ismidhat. Allah's name is, is Allah. The name of Allah Himself is Allah. These other names like Rahman, Rahim, and the 99 names, these are the qualities. But Allah is His name. Allah, Rabbil. So Allah, his, He is starting saying that my name is Allah. And I told you then He is describing Himself. He says He's the Rabb, the Lord, 
Now the Rabb has different meanings. You can do Lord, or he's the nourisher. He's the, I was explained last week, I think some, of some time ago. Rabb means the person who looks after, Murabbi. A person who looks after, nourisher, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that belongs to Allah. So these are the tarjuma of Alameen. Alameen is the uh, alam, the one, the plural, is alameen. Alam is the jama itself, meaning all kinds of universe. So Allah Ta'ala, so you say the alameen is not only the universe, some have said there's so many other universe, Allah Ta'ala is the, uh, Allah Ta'ala is the Lord of everything. So Allah says His name is Allah, Rabb is the description, He's the Rabb of universe. He's a nourisher. He nourishes us. Rab, another thing about Rab is he's the one who's the Lord, so we are the slaves. When Allah is the Rab, Allah wants us to make us understand that we are the slaves. Rabbil Alameen. Allah Ta'ala goes and says, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Now he uses two qualities, Rahman and Rahim. From all the qualities is two. Even Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Rahman Ar-Rahim. One other reason is um, Allah Ta'ala in the Quran says, Qurid Allah, Awid Ar-Rahman. Call upon Allah and call upon Rahman. And the Rahman and Rahim are similar words. They're so both from Rahman. But the Rahman is more merciful than Rahim. We say more gracious and most merciful. But they both mean Raham. They both mean Raham, having mercy. But Rahman is Mubalagh. Rahman will be most extremely merciful. And that Rahman can only be used for Allah, you see. Rahim can't be used. Rahim can be used for Allah, but Rahman can't be used for any slave. See, Allah Ta'ala uses, uh, 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 for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he uses Rahim. Yeah? In one of the Quran, Allah Ta'ala, Prophet Sallallahu is Rahim. It was Rahim. Okay, amongst the people. But he wouldn't say Ra- Rahman. Prophet Sallallahu is not Rahman. Prophet Sallallahu is Rahim. So Rahman is extremely merciful. And some of says, you know, because Allah Ta'ala, he is saying that Rahman, he is so merciful that even the believers... And then the non-believers, Allah Ta'ala is merciful that He gives them. You know, He gives everyone what they need. But the hereafter, the word Rahim will only be for the believers. So the word Rahman is so merciful that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has mercy on the believers and the non-believers. And He will give them food and everything in dunya. But Rahim is only for the believers. Rahim, Rahim is a sifat. We can go deep into Rahim, Rahim, why Allah Ta'ala is so merciful and all those Ilhamu man fil ard, Yalhamu kumman fil sama. You have Rahim on the people of the earth, Allah Ta'ala will have Rahim on you. Rahim, Allah Ta'ala says, I have, I have, I have distributed Rahim 100, 100 parts. And one, I have, you know, one part of that Rahim I have sent into the world. And because of that one part, you will see the love, the Rahim between the mother and the children. You will see between the animals, that is the only one part of Raham. With 99 parts are reserved for Allah on the Day of Judgment, Allah Ta'ala will use that Raham to forgive people. Yeah, so Raham is such a thing, we should have Raham, Allah Ta'ala, we are saying that we should have this Raham as mercy on people as well. Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim, Maliki, Yawm al I see Allah Ta'ala is saying He's the most merciful, He's the most, you know, uh, most, most extremely merciful and merciful, but then we don't forget that He is our Lord, so we have to worship Him. So He's saying, Maliki Yawmiddin. So He sent you to the world, remember, you will have to pay the price of what you do, because He is the Malik, the King of Yawm, the day of Deen. The Deen means the day of resurrection, the day of Qiyamah. So we don't get too happy. You know, Allah Ta'ala is so extremely merciful. He is going to forgive us. Allah says, remember, I am very, very, very merciful. I will forgive all of you. But remember, everything that you do, all your actions, Maliki Yawmiddin. So you have Tawheed, now you have Akhirat. Maliki, he's the Malik of Yawm, the day of Deen. And I mentioned before as well, Alladheena yukathibuna bi Yawm al-Deen in Surah Ma'un. That Deen is from the word Dain. Dain means debt. So when you give someone money, they have to give it back. Debt. So... Whatever we do in this world, good or bad, we will, have, we will get paid back exactly in the hereafter. So that is why I call Yawm al-Deen, it's called the day of jaza. In the Quran, jaza, yani, where you would get reward for what we do. So Allah is saying, remember, I am merciful, but whatever actions that you will carry out, you will have to pay the price. You will, have, you will get rewarded. 
If you do one atom of good, misqal, misqal is the one smallest thing that you can do. One small khayr, yara, you will see it. If you do misqal of shar, one atom, smallest thing of shar, yara, you will see it. Allah Ta'ala will do insaf and he will, you know, he says even one animal that hurt, or one animal with horns, he says, you know, with seeing wala janwar, be seeing wale janwar, an animal with a horn, horns that attack the animal without the horns, even Allah Ta'ala will give that badla. That's how much badla it will be. There will be no zulm. There will be, you know, Maliki Yomidi, we can go into the Qiyamah. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will have the, so one of the old mawazin al qis he will be the judge, and Allah Ta'ala will have the scale presented in, in, in a big scale presented in front, and everyone will be there. And whatever one person will be called forward, the good deeds and the bad deeds will be put onto the scale, and whichever one will. So this is a day that Allah is saying, you will have to give and stand in front of Allah. And once, see now going to once we've realized that Allah is the Rabb, Allah is Rahman, Allah is Rahim, Allah will test us and will pay us back what we do, Malik Yawmiddin. Now we come to our understanding that He is the one that deserves to be worshipped. So it is common sense that we say, Iyaka na'budu. We only, Allah Ta'ala said, Iyaka na'budu. Only you we will worship, we worship. Only Allah, because this Iyaka putting you before na'budu is for hasab, meaning it's for emphasis. That only you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will worship because after realizing that praises are for Allah, He's created us, He's the Rahman, He's the Rahim, He'll have mercy on us in this world and the hereafter. I will have to pay or give an account on that day of resurrection. It comes to our understanding that we have to worship. Ya Allah, I only worship you. And for worship, we need the help of Allah. That is why extremes, I know, actually after Iyya Kanabudu we sing, Wa Iyya Kanastain. And only you we ask for help. We ask Allah Ta'ala for help in everything. So now ibadat abda. Ibadat, this is why our person, we are only called abd because of ibadat. You know, abd, what is abd? Abd means slave. You know, Allah Ta'ala uses for prophet. Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi. He, Prophet was called a slave because he himself was the slave is a person who completely everything we do it for Allah. Now we should be not temporary a slave, slave, not a servant, a servant who comes and works and then he goes back home. A slave, he's always a slave. We're always a slave because Allah has already said he's a rub. So that means what we are trying to say that we are the slave. And the reason ibadat is before isti'ana, na'budu is before nasta'in, is ibadat is the reason we are, we are created for. So we need to do ibadat, only we will worship you, and for this we will need the help, that is an iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. And remember that, this, that's why this surah is so comprehensive with everything, because it's got everything, ibadat and isti'ana. It's got dua as well, this is dua. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Now, in asking help, we can ask help, Ya Allah, I need help in my dunya, I need help in these problems, I need help in all the world problems. <laughs> what is the biggest help that we need in is the guidance. So straight after Allah Ta'ala says, What was ihdina sirat wal mustaqim? Ya Allah, guide us, ihdina, guide us. Sirat means the path, mustaqim, the straight path. Onto the straight path. Now what is the straight path? Allah Ta'ala will mention, because there's so many paths. The straight path Allah Ta'ala mentions the next side. So, ihdina, hidayat dena. So sometimes we ask him, imagine this, 20 times, if you just read the first salah, 20 times every day, we are asking Allah, guide us, guide us, guide us, guide us. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim Ihdina, and with the sunnahs and nawafil, that's over 40, 50 times a day, we are continually asking Allah, guide us, guide us, guide us. Guide us. So that is why guidance is so important. You know, sometimes we say, continue. See, there's two types of hidayat. One is hidayat, and then one is to stay on hidayat. So, alhamdulillah, sometimes we can be on hidayat, or we can be led astray. So, hidayat is, and sirat al mustaqim is a straight path. You know, they give an example, like two walls, if there was one, two walls on both sides, and we were walking, and there were small, small doors on this wall, and the walls on this side, and we are walking. So, this is a straight path. And any other path that we take, 
or those doors, we go out that door or this door or that door, these are all going to lead us astray. It's a straight path and this is a path. And these are the path of leading us astray. Sirat al Mustaqim is there is only one path. And if you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you you know, subul, the sabil, the rasta, Allah ta'ala, we will help you. But the sirat is only one sirat. There is no other way to success. It's only one sirat. Some have said it is the deen, it is the Islam, in the deen, in the Allah, in the Islam, it is the following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever the sirat al mustaqim is, whether, whatever it is, get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ihidin al hidayah, there's two types of as well. You know, going into the hidayat, one is ira'atu tariq and one is isal ila al matloob. I'll give you an example. Ira'atu tariq you say, um, can you tell me the way from here to Asda? So I said, you know what, you go outside, you go straight onto this road, all the age, and then you turn left. I, t- I give a direction to get there. This is called ira'atu tariq. I stay here, I just give him the direction. One is isal ila al matloob. Another type of hidayat is I said, okay, I'll hold your hand and I take and walk him all the way to Asda. So obviously this second hidayat is better because I've actually shown him that here this is Azda. So this hidayat we are asking Allah that ya Allah you guide us the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show us the path through Quran. This is the hidayat, Quran. And the following the prophets will actually lead you to that path. So both of type of hidayat is mentioned in, well scholars of Mufassim said they are both are in this hidayat. Now what is the straight path? Because there's so many, everyone thinks, everyone claims to be on the straight path. Everyone today is in this path, I'm on the straight path, this is on the straight path, this is on the straight path. So everyone, so Allah Ta'ala here is guiding us to which path you need to ask for. Sirat al an'amta alayhim. That path which you have favored upon. Sirat al the one, an'amta alayhim, which you have favored upon. And Allah Ta'ala in this other surah, Nisa, he says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, he, there مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ مَنْ يُطِئِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِهِينَ It's four, three, four paths أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Yes, this word here أَنْعَمَ This was mentioned in Surah Fatih is mentioned there أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِهِينَ the, 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 the favored the, the path that Allah has favored upon is the path of Nabiyyin the path of Siddiqin Abu Bakr Siddiq, these, the, these are the people, the highest state is in Jannah, Siddiqeen, Shuhada, the martyrs, and the Salih, the righteous people. This is these four people. But if we follow the right path, is Allah give us the guidance for this path. Whatever path the follower, the, the Anbiya, the Siddiqeen, Shuhada, we want to follow that path. Okay? And then Allah Ta'ala says, when we ask in the last thing, غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ this two path, Allah Ta'ala, we are asking protection, Ya Allah, not that path, غَيْرِ maghdub Maghdub, this part Allah Ta'ala ka ghussa, where Allah Ta'ala has angered that path, on that to the path where Allah has got angry at them. And wala dali in the second path, not the path that have been led astray. The wrong path, dal gumra, the one that is gone, I don't know, been led astray. So this two path, Allah Ta'ala, we are asking protection. Ya Allah, don't, don't guide us towards a path that you have angered and the other path that you have led them astray. Now these two paths, scholars have said, they are referring to two types of group. Now before Prophet Sallallahu the Islam, there was the Jews and the Christians. Okay, so the, 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 and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala had given knowledge, knowledge to the, the Jews, the scholars of Jews. They had the knowledge, they were the scholars, Bani Israel. And they had the knowledge, but they did not act upon the knowledge. And one of Dalin in the Quran it says that Dalin is a Christian, they didn't even they themselves have difference of opinion about Isa alayhi salam. Is that not okay? So they don't have the knowledge of the truth. This is the true knowledge is the, the, the path Allah subhanahu min al-Nabiyyin was Siddiqin was Shwada was Salihin. So having knowledge but not that, not not acting upon it. Two things. Not only, I'm not saying the Christians are doing, I'm just saying any path that has the knowledge but do not act upon it. Or the other path that don't have the knowledge at all. So if you don't have the knowledge, you will let it be led astray. You need to have the correct knowledge and that knowledge will only be beneficial and Allah will get happy if that knowledge has been acted upon. Or else 
Allah will get angry because you knew what the right path was, yet you did not follow. So then that becomes a maghdubi alayhim. When you have the knowledge, the Jews, they had the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the sifat. You know, look at this, they knew the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Buhayra when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was taken as a kid. He said that this Iman will become the Prophet. And the Jews were waiting for the Prophet They knew the right messenger would come just because he, he was not from the Bani Israel. They had the knowledge, they had the quality of the Prophet sallallahu in their books. But they did not act upon that is why Allah got angry. That is maghdubi alayhim. You have the knowledge, but don't act upon it. And waladdalin, you don't have the knowledge. Ya Allah, we want the knowledge and we want to act upon as well. So when we have the knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to act upon. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a bit. Like I said, the Surah Fatiha, it's so long. It is very, very long. The whole of Quran is in Surah Fatiha. We can take you know, many, many shaykh, we can take many, many branches out of each surah and each ayat. But this is a simple, simple tafsir. It's just to understand the verse, what we are asking Allah every single day. For at least 20 times, if it's far as if it's sunnah, you add the sunnah, it comes out to be 33, 32, 34 times. Every day we are asking this. We need to learn at least the surah fatiha. How many, how many, you know, from years sometimes we've been reading surah fatiha and we don't even know what we are asking. Very important. We, this is not enough, like I said, surah fatiha. There's books and books that have been written, tafsir, you know, jills and volumes have been written on surah fatiha. So this is just a brief tafsir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to do amal uh, of everything Allah Taala wants us for, give us the ability to study the Quran. It's very important. Study the Quran, study tafsir, and inshallah Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept all of our efforts. Amin wa akhiru da'wan ilahamdulillah rabbil alamin. Inshallah, if there are more tafsir classes in future, inshallah, we will announcements will be made, and inshallah, we will think of continuing this tafsir. We our plan was to just do the last 10 surahs and then we extend it to Surah Fatih as well. So inshallah, hopefully in future, if there are any more tafsir of maybe other surahs or maybe from the Amma, inshallah, announcements will be made. Jazakallah. Ameen wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakum wa rahmatullahi wa bihamdi, wa nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati wa ma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi wa bihamdi.